Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. This video is brought to you by Tagitize, the easiest way to run tag all on multiple Revit views and sheets. Also, say goodbye to overlapping tags. Tagitize will turn this into this. Try Tagitize completely for free using the link in this video's description. Let's automate some Revit annotation today. What we can do is change the text size in all of tags in this view. However, I don't really fancy doing that manually because that would require opening each tag family, finding all text labels, changing their font sizes, and then reloading each family back into my model. That tedious work would totally kill my vibe. So let's make Dynamo do this job for us. I'll show you today how to create this little Dynamo script to do that. Let me run it now for the window tags category so you can believe me. There we go. I have updated the text size in all window tag families in one single click. How sweet is that? Of course, I, I can repeat this for other tag categories as well, such as door tags or furniture tags. We can even do this once for all tag categories, but that's a bit dangerous, don't you think? So I didn't do it like that. However, if you want to change all tag categories at once, let me know in the comments and I'll show that in the next tutorial. If you don't have much time and just want to run this script right away, simply find in the video's description a link to download this script directly. If you, however, want to learn to code this yourself, let me show you how right now, step by step. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. To start, let's create a new script in Dynamo. I will now add a Python node to the graph and open it for editing. However, this is not a good script editor, so I'll type the code out in Visual Studio Code instead and copy it back into Dynamo at the end. If you're new to this workflow, don't worry. Just find in the video's description below a link to my other tutorial on how to set up this coding environment. It will also provide you with this Python template for Dynamo that will give you all the necessary information to then return to this video and start scripting with me. All right, with that out of the way, so let's start scripting. First, let's create a class that will allow us to reload modified Revit families back into our model. According to the API, this class needs to implement the iFamilyLoad options interface. So I'll call it family load options and define it like this. The interface requires two methods. The first one is onFamilyFound. I'll implement it as a function in this Python class with the necessary input parameters like this. So what's this method for? Remember when loading a family into the model, there's a chance that a family of the same name already exists in there. If that's the case, this method will tell Revit whether to overwrite the existing families and its parameters or not. We will want to do that for this task, so let me now set the overwrite parameter values variable to true and then return true from the method. The second method we need to implement is called unshared family found. It serves the exact same purpose as the first method above, but it's used specifically for families that are shared. For this script, I also want to overwrite the existing shared families and their parameters for shared families. So let me also set the overwrite parameter values variable to true and then return true from this second method. Very nice. We can now move on to collecting inputs for this Python script. The first one will be the tag category and the second input is the desired font size we want to apply. This needs to be in decimal feet because that's the unit used internally by the Revit API. If you want to input a value in metric, don't worry. I'll show you at the end how to convert your metric input to decimal feet before passing the value to Python. Also, we should create two lists to report the result of running this script. I'll call them done for successfully modified tags and failed for those we need to review manually afterwards. Hopefully, there'll be nothing under failed. That's usually the case anyway. Next, let's make sure any pending transaction in the model is closed. This step is important because our script will open Revit families for editing. If the main project model is still under modification by a transaction, we can't start family edit mode. To be safe, let's call force close transaction here. Amazing, now it's time to actually edit some families. We, however, need to do that inside a try except block like this. 
This is because some families may be corrupt. Editing those families would cause an error in the API. By using a try accept block, we can tell the script to simply skip those corrupt families and continue to process other ones. With that in place, I can now iterate through the ID of all families in the model like this. For each ID, let's call the getElement method to obtain the actual family object if that method returns. None, however, that means there's no existing family with that ID. If that's the case, let's just skip this ID and continue checking the next ID. We also need to check if the selected category is indeed a tag category. For example, door tags should be used instead of doors. If that's a pass, let's go ahead and get the family name like this. So far, so good. The next step is to open the family for editing. Let's simply call doc.editFamily and pass in the family object. Before editing any texts in this family, though, I'll define a new variable called allParametersSet. It's a Boolean variable with an initial value of true. Its purpose is to keep track of whether setting all text size parameters in this family is successful. You will see how it works in a second. All right, now let's actually edit some texts. I can start by opening a transaction in the family document like this. Make sure the transaction is started. Then let's loop through all text types in the family using a filtered element collector. For each text type, I'll get its font size parameter using a built-in parameter value like this. If the parameter exists, we can set the text size using the font size value in decimal feet. The value returned from the set method here will be true if the operation is successful or false otherwise. I can then combine this new Boolean value with the all parameters set value defined earlier with an AND operator like this. This means the all parameters set flag will turn false as soon as one text type fails to update to the desired font size. Once we have checked all text types in this family, I'll commit the transaction to save font size changes to the family document. Let's now load this freshly improved and enhanced family back into our main model. When calling the load family method, I can pass in a new instance of the family load option class we defined at the start to safely handle any conflicts. Now, after being loaded into the model, the family we edited is still open. Let's close it like this. The false input parameter tells Dynamo not to save the family before closing it. This makes sense as we've already loaded its latest version into the model anyway. What we should do next is record the result of editing the family. If all text size parameters have been set successfully, let's add the family name to the done list. Otherwise, pop it into the failed list. These lists will be visible in the Dynamo graph, so we can inspect any failed families and fix those manually. Now, remember, we opened a try accept block at the beginning. It's time to finish it with the accept clause like this. Here, I'm also adding any family that the script couldn't open to the failed list. These are likely corrupt families. There's often none, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Let's refresh the active view to see the new text size in our tags. Finally, I'll add both the done and failed lists to the output. And with that, our Python script is complete. Next, uh, let's copy all text from this file, paste it into the Python node in Dynamo, save it and close this node. Also, let's switch the Python engine here from Python 3 to Python 2. This is because my script was written in Visual Studio Code in Python 2 and not Python 3. Here, we also need to add a category node to specify which tag category the script should modify. Last but not least, let's add a quick unit conversion node here. This will convert the text size value in your preferred unit, such as millimeters, to the script's required unit of decimal feet. For the actual unit value, use a code block like this. I'll connect all these inputs to the Python nodes and make sure my inputs and output units in the conversion are correct. With that, our Dynamo script is finally complete. Let's now run the script to see it in action. All right, it has worked on my existing tags. It will also work on new tags, so I can duplicate this view without duplicating the tags. Run tag all, select a few categories, 
and click OK. You can clearly see that new tags are also generated with the new text size now. That's excellent. However, these tags have lots of overlap with each other. Some even clash badly with existing elements in the view. Even worse, it created many empty, meaningless tags that make the view really confusing now. If we go back to the view I showed at the beginning, it looks much tidier and there are no empty tags. Well, that's because I tagged this view not with tag all, but with tagitize. Let me show you that again in this new view. So I'll undo tag all here, then run the tag active view command from tagitize. There we go, it has done it. My new tag layout is much cleaner and easier to read. For example, we no longer have empty furniture tags here and the room tag for this stairwell is clear. In this other region, Tagitize intelligently use tag leaders to prevent these tags from clashing with nearby walls. There are still overlaps between some tags where there's not much available space. This is easy to fix. Simply select the tags like this and then click the next button here to tell Tagitize to try the next possible tag positions. You can keep cycling through the options until you find a suitable one. You probably also noticed that Tagitize can apply a different tagging style for each Revit category. For example, a 45 degree leader line here, a straight leader line there, and so on. This is possible thanks to its comprehensive settings. One of those is the option to not create empty tags, and we have all seen how useful it was. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to know more about other settings available here. If you'd like to try out Tagitize, there's a link to download it below as well. All right, so there you have it. If you just want to run this script, there's a link in the video's description to download it. If you, however, want to master Python scripting in Dynamo to create this kind of script yourself, check out my full online Python for Dynamo course, also linked to in the video description. If you like this lesson and want more like this every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, have a good day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.